at 11. CBS 47 Action News Jax starts right now. And tonight, the Newtown community is grieving the loss of three people in a racially motivated mass shooting this weekend. We're hearing from family members of the victims who were killed at a Dollar General on King's Road. Action News Jax has been following this story all weekend, and we have the latest tonight on the investigation. But first, the first alert weather team tracking tropical storm Idalia in the Caribbean and its potential impacts on Jacksonville this week. I'm John Bach. And I'm Tanika Hughes. We have team weather coverage tonight from our first alert weather center. We have Chief Meteorologist Mike Burge and first alert meteorologist Corey Sima with us now. You both tracking the storm over the Caribbean, but you are expecting impacts here at home in the coming days. Exactly right. And Corey, the system, uh, Idalia, is strengthening now. The latest numbers from the Hurricane Center show this to be a little bit stronger. And by the way, strong Franklin off to the east, but Franklin still looks like a storm that stays well east of Florida. So the, the main concerns Idalia. Even just through the day to day, we have seen a lot of signs with Idalia strengthening. So definitely it's been top of mind the last couple of days. It continues to be. Right. And here are the new numbers from the National Hurricane Center. You're looking at winds at about 60 miles per hour. At 74 miles per hour, it's a hurricane and that's expected to happen. The track, and this is updated within the last hour, takes it to the northeast, bending right across the Big Bend and northeast Florida and southeast Georgia. Virtually all of our viewing area is in that forecast cone. There you can see it. Remember, that'll get skinnier as our confidence increases, but it doesn't have anything to do with weather might be damaged. It's expected to be a cat, borderline cat three, but cat two wants a little more inland. That's at 8 o'clock Wednesday morning with estimated winds near 100 miles per hour. And then that would track to the northeast, just north and west of Jacksonville. That's pretty significant for us when it comes to winds. Franklin stays well to the east with waves and rip currents at our coast. Local impacts, especially Tuesday night through Wednesday, heavy rain, tornadoes, and the wind threat. That appears to be our biggest concern, Corey, as that storm, Adelia, worked its way through the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, Mike, and the closer we are to the center, wherever the center of that storm goes, that's where the winds are going to be highest. This is given the current forecast. It's important to remember that because this forecast might change a little bit. And even small, minute changes in that track, it's a matter of miles, and that makes a big difference. So this is the percent chance of 39-plus mile per hour winds, basically tropical storm force winds. And those percentages or chances are highest near and west of I-95. It'll still be breezy out at the beaches, but it does not look like this is going to be a serious kind of storm for the beaches. We will be talking more about that in the coming days. What to do over the next couple of days, including cleaning the gutters, trimming the trees, secure patio furniture, most importantly, stay calm and Mike there are a lot of ways that people can get weather information yeah, exactly Corey we want you to stay up to date round the clock by of course tuning in CBS 47 and Fox 30 action news jacks online actionnewsjacks.com download for free our first alert weather app and on the radio 104.5 WOKB we're breaking down these impacts hour by hour in just about 15 minutes and as the first look weather team mentioned, they're going to be tracking Idalia and other possible storms this hurricane season. Download the 2023 Hurricane Guide on ActionNewsJax.com to stay prepared for the next storm. In times like these, we need a savior. We miss you. I always told you I love you. Just keep your daughter wrapped up and keep looking down on her. I can tell you it angers me as a sheriff, as a member of this community. No family should ever have to deal with something like this. No more division. No more hate. We cannot tolerate hate against our black community. We are not going to let people be targeted based on their race. I feel like you was a coward. You went in there and shot these innocent people for nothing that you didn't even know. And families' hearts are broken. And our community is shattered into pieces. In times like these, we need a savior. In time. Hurt and heartbreak in Jacksonville tonight. The Newtown community is banding together after a racially motivated mass shooting this weekend. Yesterday, police say a Clay County man dressed in a bulletproof vest and a mask shot and killed three black people at a Dollar General. Local and state leaders are calling it a hate 
filled tragedy. The White House responding to the mass shooting tonight. President Biden saying, we must refuse to live in a country where black families live in fear of being gunned down because of the color of their skin. Vice President Kamala Harris saying that it was an act driven by racism and hatred. Today, Jacksonville Sheriff T.K. Waters called the shooting, quote, a sickening act of inexcusable violence. Action News Chats brought you the sheriff's live briefing this afternoon where he identified the three people killed in the shooting and named the person responsible. Sheriff Waters says 21-year-old Ryan Palmer from Clay County shot and killed these three people at the Dollar General there on Kings Road. Angela Carr, Gerald Gallion, and an old A.J. Legary Jr., who was 19 years old. We heard from Dollar General. They say that Legary was one of their employees. All three of the victims were black. JSO says Palmetto drove to Jacksonville, put on a mask and a bulletproof vest, and shot those three people to death with an AR-15 type rifle and Glock. We have team coverage of this mass shooting in Newtown tonight. Action News Jack's Ben Becker has a timeline of the shooter's actions around the time of the killing. Jake Stofan has reaction from local and state leaders, including Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. But we're going to start with Action News Jack's Nick Gibson. He's live in Newtown. And Nick, you heard from a relative of one of the people who was killed. Yes, yeah, Sabrina Rozier tells me that her son-in-law was loving and also caring, and she also tells me that her family will truly miss him. That's the father of my granddaughter. Sabrina Rozier is grieving the loss of 29-year-old Gerald Gallion. JSO says he was one of three people killed in a racially motivated shooting at a Newtown Dollar General on Saturday. 52-year-old Angela Carr and 19-year-old Anat Legary Jr. were also killed. <laughs> Dozens showed up near the scene of a deadly shooting for a vigil to honor the victims. We spoke with Rozier afterwards, and she said she was Galleon's mother-in-law. He was loving, he was caring. He was always a jokester, but he was a hard worker. Rozier says when her family got the call about the shooting, they didn't expect it would end in a tragedy. When we first got the call, I'm thinking just, okay, a shot, maybe the leg or arm. And so we got the shans and found out this happened. Jesso says the gunman, 21-year-old Ryan Palmeter from Oak Leaf, wanted to kill black people. The shooting happened in a black community and was just a two-minute drive from the campus of Edward Waters University, an HBCU. I hate the reason behind it because it's from racism, which I'm tired of because we need to come together. As loved ones continue to process their loss, Rozier shared a final message to Galleon. Gerald, baby, you hurt us with this one. We miss you. I always told you I love you. Now, according to Rozier, her son-in-law leaves behind a four-year-old daughter for local coverage you can count on. Reporting from Jacksonville, Nick Gibson, Action News Jacks. Tomorrow, we expect to hear from the security officer who confronted the gunman and made him leave the campus of Edward Waters University just moments before that deadly attack at the nearby Dollar General. That officer, along with the EWU president and chief of campus safety, will be holding a news conference about the mass shooting in their community. It is happening tomorrow at 1 p.m. at the Adams Jenkins Complex on campus. Earlier today, JSO laid out an extensive timeline of events leading up to the mass shooting, along with details about the killer. Action News Jack's Ben Becker reports the shooter was first spotted at Amber Waters University in a bulletproof vest. Now, JSO provided a three-hour timeline. It started at 12.48 p.m. on Saturday when Paul Mutter pulled up behind the EWU library in a gray Honda element and put on a mask, a bulletproof vest, and gloves. And here's an image behind me. Then, just before 1 p.m., Paul Mutter drove off towards Kings Road, prompting security to follow him out. Security then flagged down a JSO officer and reported there was a suspicious man on campus that officer then began processing a be on the lookout, a bolo, and when the shooting spree began at the Dollar General around 1.08 p.m., Palmer is shown on surveillance video shooting into a black Kia that was parked in front of the store in the parking lot, killing 52-year-old Angela Carr. He then entered the store and continued shooting, killing two more people, 19-year-old Anat Legary Jr., who was a cashier, and 29-year-old Gerald Gallion. And at one point, the shooter then texted his father and said, use a screwdriver to get into my room. 
The father then found a will and a suicide note on Paul Minter's laptop. He also left behind a racist manifesto. Then, at 3.44 p.m., SWAT confirmed that the shooter was dead after he shot and killed himself. Now, as we learn more about the killer, we also learn more about the climate that hasn't changed that led to this hate crime. This is a picture of 21-year-old Ryan Palminer. Police say he first purchased this Glock at Orange Park Gun and Pawn in April. Palminer then bought this AR-15-style rifle at Wild West Guns and Gold in June. You can see the swastika he drew on the weapon. There was no flag that could have come up to stop him from purchasing those, purchasing those guns. Sheriff T.K. Waters had a news conference Sunday. Waters said Palminer didn't have a criminal record. However, he was Baker Acted in 2017, but the sheriff did not share what led to that Baker Act. Action News Jacks first showed you Saturday. Clay County deputies outside Palmetter's home throughout the day and into the evening. Sabina Escalada lived across the street from the gunman's home in Oakleaf. Just on the outside, seemed like a typical teenager. You know, like, didn't seem very happy sometimes or just wanted to keep to himself. The deadly racially motivated mass shooting on Saturday was committed five years to the day of the landing mass shooting, which was mentioned in the killer's manifesto. Over 200 grown men with bats and axe handles. It also came one day before the 63rd anniversary of Axe Handle Saturday when a racist mob attacked African Americans who were staging a sit-in at Hemming Park, which is now named for James Weldon Johnson, the author of the Black National Anthem. I have a dream. Also on Saturday, the 60th anniversary of the March on Washington was commemorated. Mayor Donna Deegan had this message Saturday to the local black community. Love them. I am so sorry that we have failed you in the ways that we have and that I will do everything in my power um, not to do that going forward. The Justice Department announced Sunday that it's investigating the shooting as a hate crime and an act of racially motivated violent extremism. For local coverage you can count on, Ben Becker, Action News Jax. Tonight, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis joined Mayor Deegan and a number of other leaders at a vigil for the three people killed in the mass shooting. It was held right next to the Dollar General where they lost their lives. Yeah, we showed you some of that with Nick Gibson. And now Action News Jack's Jake Stofan reports the leaders set a tone of unity despite a hate crime meant to drive the community apart. It was a moment that has become increasingly rare in Florida politics. Leaders on opposite ends of the political spectrum standing united, condemning the violence inflicted on Jacksonville's black community yesterday. But it wasn't lost on members of the crowd in attendance. Tragedies like these rarely happen in a vacuum. We shall Angela Michelle Carr, A.J. Laguerre, Gerald Deshaun Gallion. They're the victims killed in Saturday's racist mass shooting by a 21-year-old gunman who crossed county lines to target the predominantly black Newtown area of Jacksonville. But today is about showing up for these residents that did not deserve what happened. Sunday evening, a bipartisan coalition promoting a message of unity stood near the grounds where the crime of division was carried out just one day prior. Governor Ron DeSantis and Mayor Donna Deegan denouncing and rejecting the racist killing. No more division. No more hate. We cannot tolerate hate against our black community. We are not going to let people be targeted based on their race. But during the governor's remarks, the crowd made it clear they didn't believe the racist killings happened in a vacuum, booing him as he began to speak. In a moment of bipartisanship, Democratic Council Member Jacoby Pittman stepped in, urging the crowd to settle. It ain't about parties today. A bullet don't know a party. For Nikki Freed, chair of the Democratic Party of Florida, she says she understood the crowd's frustration, adding she hopes the governor heard the voices of the community. In this community, we need love, we need compassion, we need unity. As the governor went to depart, we caught this exchange with Democratic Jacksonville State Representative Angie Nixon. In front of the media, tell them you're going to meet with Private me. meeting. Okay. Afterwards, Nixon told us she plans to hold the governor to that commitment. To squash the rhetoric, the hateful rhetoric and the gaslighting and things like that, which has been running so rampant throughout my entire terms of office, it's, it's just time to end that so that we can start healing as a community. And in their
their remarks, both Governor DeSantis and Mayor Deegan committed to looking at ways to better fund and protect this community moving forward. For local coverage you can count on in Newtown, I'm Jake Stofan, Action News Jax. Tomorrow night, multiple organizations are putting together another vigil to grieve the three people killed. It was originally going to be an event marking 60 years since the march on Washington, as Ben mentioned. It starts at 6 tomorrow night. It's being held at James Weldon Johnson Park in downtown Jacksonville. Action News Jax will keep following this developing story this week. We'll have updates on air and online with the latest in the investigation. And right now you can find our full coverage on the shooting that includes details on the victims, what we've learned about the shooter, and responses from local, state, and national leaders.